Hey guys, and today I have another kind of technical video. This is going to cover slow casting. Now, it may be a bit pandantic uh, by the title, but it's pretty clear what's going on. So essentially, I'm able to cast a ray in a slower rate and detect when I hit a villager and then also detect what happens at the very end. And this is going to be in the form of a module that you guys can kind of mess with a few things that I have designated. So if you want to install it, go ahead and go to the link in the description. It'll be a zip folder, drag it into here, it will say unzip me. So then you'll unzip the zip folder because it will be in this format. So uh, it's going to be in a compressed zip folder and you need to extract the files and then when you open the folder, the first thing you see should say data and pack. That's an important thing that sometimes gets mixed up with different uh, computers. Anyways, so hopping into it, it's a very lightweight pack. It literally has maybe, I think, 12 functions. So it's not even a part of the Mapmakers toolbox because it doesn't do things for you necessarily. It's something for you to manipulate and take a look at. So the principle is pretty sim simple. You have a ray that you're able to do like ray casting, but it's in a slower rate and it's in a much better way than your traditional TP at S4, right? So this will move me forward, but if I went, if I'm right here and I TP forward, I just went through the villager. So I'm no longer able to detect him. So this basically offers the same crystal clear protect detection as uh, ray casting, but in a slower or more noticeable format. And you can control how fast it is. So in the example file under example, um, and this is just a system that I use in my packs. Anything that is not inside Z private is something that you can mess with. Z private is supposed to be kept intact unless you know what you're doing. Um, or you really know what you're doing. I mean, um, but this is the stuff that you can safely mess with as long as it still does what it's supposed to. Now, this is a pretty simple convention. So I made the raycast function for this by default, have a precision of 0.5 blocks. So when you're inputting these numbers, you just take the number that you put here uh, or whatever number you want and divide it by 0.5 or multiply by 0.5 and that'll show you how far it'll travel. So with a value of four, the ray travels in two blocks per tick. If I put the value of one, that means it'll travel half a block per tick, but then it's really like, uh, you could have just done TP forward by uh, 0 0.5, so I don't know why you're using this. Uh, so you usually don't want to use one. So let's go with two or four, four is good. Uh, we can make this thing faster, but we'll look at that later. Then the DST slow cast, so DST per is how many per it travels, so related to the speed. And DST is the total distance. So this is going to be 12 blocks because we are in half block steps, so 24. Oh, so I can change this to, let's say, uh, let's really dramatize it to 48. And if I type reload and I play the example, I'm going to align myself so I'm looking straight. You can really see that there is a delay there between the start and the finish. And there's a lot of cool properties about this delay. So we can actually mess with A, the ray casting that happens along the way. And this is something you would definitely want to mess with. By default, I've loaded it with a nice preset of um, a perfect hitbox here where it says hit, but you can play a function here. And the context of this is that um, anything after this run statement is something that you hit with a pretty accurate hitbox uh, for any entity in the game and at s will refer to the thing that you hit and at e with a tag of this at e tag equals this refers to the player so not only is this uh, allow you to detect entities but also keeps context of who is playing this um, keep in mind that if you use this there will be two things that have the tag of this the player and I think the uh, area effect cloud that has a tag of slow cast. So you may see something pop up where you see uh, this is applying to two things. Um, and that's just because there is two things associated with this. This is the area effect cloud and this is the player. And I use that to make sure that you don't accidentally hit the raycaster in the raycasting, which is a common problem. You accidentally hit your leg because you shoot looking down. Um, 
demonetized. Anyways, uh, so then all this stuff is actually kind of important to the system. I wouldn't touch it. The, the only thing that you could touch is the 0 0.5 values. You can make it more or less accurate. And then changing from air to some kind of block tag. Actually, I think by default, I'll make it slow cast air. I'll just change it to that. And slow cast air, I'll have a couple things in and you can mess with that. We'll just hop over there real quick. Uh, but I think that's for the best. And then you can change the particle. You can have no particle or you can change what particle it is. So one of the things that you'll be able to edit is going to be right here. We will call this air and this will just be air. So for now, slow cast air goes through air and cave air because cave air is also air. Uh, and if you want to add a new thing, you just add a new line, make sure there's a comma, type in the name of the block that it can go through. Um, but anyways, uh, this basically, I'll explain how the system works later, but I'm explaining how to use it for now. Uh, now, as for the functions, so that's how you mess with Raycast. You can change what happens. Right now, it just says hit and the entity it hit. Um, you can change what that does with a function. And keep in mind, anything tagged with this is both the player and the area effect cloud called with the tag of Raycast, uh, Slowcast. Um, so once you reach, if you hit a block that you're not supposed to go through, it will cause an end to update and you don't mess with this um, but you can mess with what happens at the end right here so this will cause the end to happen there's another system that will cause the end to happen and that's if you've traveled the maximum distance which we've already seen an example of uh, the context here for the end this is what happens at the end so the function titled end is what happens at the end and for you it won't have the diamond block thing because that might get annoying um, but it resets the slow id score this kind of needs to be there um, but you can change what this is. So this just does a say command. You can do any command you want. You can play a function in your own pack. So this can just be a namespace in your pack. Uh, and you can do whatever. Then start is basically what happens when you start it. And I left it out here because maybe you want to do something, but really you shouldn't. I just left it out here. So it's a shorter slash function command to type. Um, now, if we hop into example, really all you need to do to activate this is set some global score here set a global score here and play the start function and when you play the start function it'll go don't worry these global scores can change while another one is already going uh, the global score just gets immediately transferred onto the dummy area effect cloud now as for kind of a background as to how it's working it's fairly simple um, and also complicated at the same time right uh, but it summons an area effect cloud and the area effect cloud gets the same score as the player now that the area effect cloud gets the same score as the player, the area effect cloud gets the same scores that were on the global score before it was spawned, which is why it still maintains some stuff. You don't want to touch these scoreboards because they're kind of like just for the system. You just mess with the slow cast scoreboard. Now that entity then gets to face the same way the player is, and then it is uh, started with the launch. So the launch code. The launch code tags anything that has the same score as the area effect cloud. That's this command with this so that you know like who the player is to make sure that you don't accidentally hit the person who cast it. Um, and then it loads the distance that it's supposed to travel in one raycast. It plays the raycast. Then it subtracts the distance that it did travel from the total distance. So if the total distance reaches uh, less than zero from this subtraction, then it decides to end and then it removes the tag of this afterwards to maintain the context of how this works and how this is not persistent. So keep in mind how we give the tag and we remove it at the end. So the next entity that plays this function will see nobody in the world with the tag of this, just itself. Um, it's just, you, you add it and remove it before even the next execution line. All right, so that's pretty much it. Now we go into main and what this does is just at all of the area effect clouds, you just run the launch command. So it'll do launch, it'll give the tag, it will do the raycast, it will remove the tag, and then it will do it again for the next one that's in the world if you have multiple. And it plays this every tick. And then end simply locates the play the entity. It, this works for non-players as well, which it could be uh, optimized. If you change the at E here to at P, that'll be a little bit better. Um, but I wanted to make it so you can use this on anything. Um, but it finds the entity that is not um, 
that is linked to it and it runs the true end and kills the area effect cloud to delete the middleman um, that way effectively giving you an output of end similar to how you would see in a raycast in a raycast when a raycast is over your context is you're at the position of the end of the raycast but still as the original caster and that is the point of this data pack to maintain raycast consistencies but with this slow cast system uh, now if i were you what i would do is i would go to slow cast see this i would just drag this into my own data pack this whole namespace believe it or not you can have more than just minecraft in your namespace you can have your own as well but throw this into your data pack go ahead and go into your own load and tick functions and add this to your tick function with a comma just like that onto your own data packs tick function and this into your own data packs load function and if you do that then you don't have to mess with any of the namespaces and all you do is you just access my own functions the way that i just described them to you and you can edit this tag to edit what blocks it can go through anyways that's pretty much it let's just go ahead and throw uh, the example out and you can see that it just kind of keeps traveling and the way that I have this, the raycast configured, it stops inside the block, so uh, it does that as well. And let's hit this guy. And it doesn't stop when it hits an entity. And it says hit villager. It says it twice because it doesn't stop when it hits an entity. And you can see Cloud Wolf has ended, so it maintains context of the original entity. Anyways, guys, that's pretty much it. Kind of highly technical, but this thing is very useful for certain situations. In fact, I'm going to use it on my server for stuff like rocket launchers, RPGs, things that you don't want hit scan to happen. Um, but anyways, other than that, if you guys have any suggestions, uh, let me know. I've personal side note, I have an interesting kind of Q and A video coming up, but I've been really busy, so uh, that's why this video is out at a weird time and kind of uh, like I missed my weekly two uploads. And that's because I'm writing literally three 15-page essays in the span of a week. But anyways, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.